Folks, Christmas has come early for me this year. Phil Wickham has put out a brand new Christmas music single, and it's just been sitting underneath the tree, unwrapped, meaning I haven't listened to it yet, and I'm about to listen to it for the first time in this video, and you're gonna get to see my real-time reaction to the song Manger Throne. Now, I don't know anything about this song specifically, but I am a student of Phil Wickham's artistry, so I'm gonna make a couple predictions, and let's just see if any of them are right. Two ways this could go. I think the song's either gonna be in 4-4, between maybe like 98 and 105 BPM, or it's gonna be in 6-8 and it's gonna be a little bit slower, I mean, like you know, 80 to 90 BPM. And uh, just going off of the title, I'm gonna predict that the last sentence of the chorus is gonna have the phrase manger thrown in it, like sun down, down, da, 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 turn your manger for a throne, or something like that. Other than that, I have no idea what I'm in for, and I could be completely wrong, so we're gonna find out right now. Now, and as I watch this video, I'm gonna be checking it out, analyzing the overall structure of the song. And I'm also curious about the Christmassy keys sounds that are gonna be used on this song. One, two, three, four. Okay. We are in G. So we're in four, four. Slower than I thought, so that, that was wrong. Mm. Minor two, six, five. Nice lift. Synth bass, strings, there's the three, four, walking up to six. Hear those Christmas bells? I got those, we're gonna come back to that. All right, this song is awesome. There's these Christmassy textures in there that, that do make it feel like a Christmas song that supports the message of the lyrics. You got some sleigh bell there, you can hear. You got that big choir coming in. There it is. Turn around. That's super orchestral in those big moments. Okay, that was a treat. It was really fun to just listen and, and react in real time. I truly had never heard that song before. It did some things that I expected, some, some Wickham-y things, like his use of dynamics, the way that he wraps around his lyrics with the chord progressions and the way that they move. That all felt quite Wickham-y. The overall production uh, felt very familiar compared to his last couple of albums. And, and I expected that, right? I mean, Phil Wickham has dialed in a, a pretty specific signature sound. And there were also some of the uh, sort of meat and potatoes-y Christmas sounds, the aesthetic of like Christmas music. Specifically, I heard sleigh bells, I heard uh, church bells or like a, like a big, you know, a pipe bell sort of sound, lots of strings. I think there was some uh, cathedral organ in there. And then what I sort of expected was like there would be a choral element because that's very common for Christmas music, especially because it's going to get sung, you know, at these church uh, like Advent or Christmas services. But I was not expecting just how insanely intense those choral parts would be. The choir parts at the end really lifted the song into a new level, something I wasn't expecting. In terms of the chord structure, uh, it's it feels really familiar to me. There's a lot of uh, movement as the, the melody lifts up. So we'd be... So that's the verse, and, and this feels like a very Phil thing to me, and uh, it starts off with a pretty close sort of piano sound. I've got a grand piano. It, it might be an upright on the recording. The main point is that it's dry. It's right in front of the mix. It's right there with you. And the way that these chords move just supports the melody. And then when we get to the pre-chorus, we do another very common thing in CCM, which is step outside of maybe four main chords, and we hit the minor two. 
and that's a really nice turn. It's the only time that I heard that chord popping up in the entire song. Now, granted, I just heard it once, so my memory might be a little bit fuzzy, but the fact that we're introducing a brand new chord that isn't present in the verse and also isn't present in the chorus just adds a little bit of momentary tension. And then when we do finally resolve back to that chorus, when things settle in a bit, it's really, really nice. Let's talk a little bit about that chorus part. Let's talk about the chord progression here. So we're on the one. to the four, back to the one, six, five. So that's a simple chord progression. It starts on the one and that land is really nice. It's a big payoff after the verse, which starts kind of minory. And you've got that minor two chord in the pre-chorus. The very first beat of this chorus is all of a sudden epic, huge, and orchestral. So it's no longer just that sort of fragile piano that's been carrying the song so far, I think maybe a little acoustic guitar. So we could build up towards a little bit of this. We could add in a nice big pad sound. So I'm gonna do silky velo strings. And there's lots of layers going on. I'm sure that a full orchestra actually scored the parts, but for us, we can evoke a similar feel just by layering a few sounds together in Sunday keys. So I might grab this string ensemble. And then the Christmassy bit to me is the church bell. So I'm gonna go here to strings and orchestra, bells. I have uh, tubular bells or I have this church bells patch. Let's see what this one sounds like. Yeah, there's Christmas right there. So they're very clangy and there's a lot of dissonance and harsh harmonics depending on where you're at in the range. But that is also part of what we associate with Christmas music. So what they're doing is only playing those changes. Those big chord changes are being accented by that uh, tubular bell sound or that church bell sound. They're not playing big busy riffs with that. It's not like a lead part. It's just like, here's the change. Here's the change. Here's the change. And this has been done in worship Christmas music for years and years. So as soon as I heard it, I was able to place it. So what I might do is just place it right there and adjust the layer range so that I can't go any lower than that. And then I really only want, yeah, I'm gonna put it here and then no, no higher than there. So when you're using these sorts of out there Christmas textures, you want to use them sparingly and you want to use them with intention. When you're playing Christmas music in your band, it's important that you guys still sound like you. You don't want to sound like some cheesy Hallmark movie for one or two services out of the year. Just adding a little bit of that acknowledgement of the season goes a long way. So I'm very specifically limiting the layer range of this sound so that it adds a little bit of texture, but it doesn't just become the core thing of the song. Let's try this chorus again. So the core ingredients are pretty familiar. I've got a piano, I've got a pad, and I've got strings. But the way that I'm playing them and the fact that that tubular church bell sound is in the mix immediately sounds a little bit Christmassy. It's not over the top, but it's just enough. And honestly, that's the thing I'm most impressed by with this song. It sounds like a modern worship song. It also sounds like Christmas music, but not in a way that's over the top, not in a way that is super cheesy. So with the inspiration of this song in mind, let's go ahead and flesh this keys patch out a little bit more. My goal is to be able to go from that very quiet, subdued starting point to this big orchestral epic arrival that this song absolutely nails. But it doesn't matter if you're playing this specific song or not, you can take this kind of idea and apply it to any worship song or any Christmas worship song that you're gonna be playing during Christmas at your church. So first thing I'm gonna do is just bring some of these layers back down to establish a starting point for myself. I'm going to start even more subtly than that. Yeah, nice. So just a little bit of a string pad and that piano is right out in front of the mix. Next up, I want to make sure that I can fill some low end. I definitely noticed some big synth bass in Major Throne and I can do that here as well. So I'm going to go to the bass category in Sunday Keys and I want something that has a little bit of grit because there's a lot of brightness in the mix of this song overall. There's strings, that choir is very bright, and the synth bass, in order to have some note definition and not just be low end, can have a little bit of crackle on the top as well. 
And this buzz bass is aptly named because it has just that, a little bit of buzz. Now it gets very aggressive as the mod wheel moves up. We don't necessarily want all of that brightness, but it's really easy to adjust how much we get inside of the Sunday Keys app. I'm just opening up sound settings and bringing down the mod filter settings. That adjusts how the sweep of the mod wheel affects the brightness of the sound. So now we should be a little bit darker. It's still a little bit of resonance as the mod wheel goes up. I think that feels really nice. So as I already said, this song really is orchestral by the end, and I wanna be able to bring a lot of that energy. So I think I'm gonna layer another string sound and then also add a little bit of brass. Let's start off with the strings. And I already have a, a string swell sound, which is sort of functionally a pad for me. I'm gonna play the chords and it's gonna sustain. It doesn't have tons of motion. The attack is relatively quick. It's more of a subtle, just like adding that sense of, oh, there's strings in the mix right now. So for another string sound, I wanna go the opposite direction and bring in something that has a lot of motion. So I'm gonna go to the strings category and choose, let's try this wispy violin. And there's tons of motion here. Ebbing and flowing in and out. That has a lot of motion. I'm gonna try this waves one and see if it's maybe a bit more subtle. Still dramatic, still noticeable, just a little bit slower. So if we were to take that to the chorus of Manger Throne. Yeah, that's nice and epic. It's maybe a little bit slow to decay. So I'm gonna open up sound settings here and just nudge down the release time. That's gonna make it fade out more quickly when the notes are released. It's these sorts of very subtle production choices that the app makes really easy for me to do uh, because those little differences can go a long way. If those strings took too long to fade out, I just wouldn't be able to play the parts in the same way because things would get very muddy very quickly. So I want it to be big, I want it to be ambient, but I still need to be in control and I need to be able to play relatively quickly because the changes in this song happen pretty fast. Now, let's add that brass character. Gonna go to the strings and orchestra category again and choose brass. I have two options, both trombone. And this is a quartet, and now we've got a solo overblown. I think I'm wanting more of that wall of brass kind of thing, so I'm gonna go with the quartet longs. Okay, so now that I've got a lot of things going on, I need to start mixing them to see how they all feel together. So I'm gonna bring down the levels of these orchestral elements a little bit. I'm gonna bring back in these church bells and increase the volume of my two pad layers. This is maybe, maybe bordering on my all-in sort of moment. Let's hear how it sounds right out of the gate. Yeah, to me that feels really nice. It's big, it's bright, it's Christmassy, but without being over the top. And it all sounds quite organic. There's not a ton of like a synthy character. And that's something I noticed through this song as well. Like Phil Wickham often uses a lot of synthesizers and sequenced elements, and those are present in the song, but it's more subtle. There's an emphasis on the organic, the real, and the human. I think that makes sense given the message of the song and sort of the nature of the Christmas season where we really do wanna focus on what's real, what's authentic. I think that definitely influenced the orchestration. Though I am still sort of playing this like a piano and pad combination, the sound choices takes it in a slightly different direction that to me really nails the feel of this song. Now that I have this sort of big mix set in place, I wanna give myself an easy way to navigate all of these sounds when I'm performing live. Because if I just had to swipe around and manually adjust these faders on stage, I wouldn't nail all of those marks and it wouldn't be very smooth. I'm gonna give myself three dynamic layers, so that means I'm gonna save three distinct snapshots inside of the app. Since I'm already at my all-in position, I'm gonna choose snapshot three and then hit save. Now, anytime I choose this snapshot, I'm gonna get this big all-in moment. I'm also gonna bring up the mod wheel 
and hit save one more time because that's just going to make the synths a little bit brighter for that all in moment. So I'm going to go to snapshot two. I'm going to bring down the brightness of the mod wheel. And then I think I'm going to take out both of these last two orchestral layers, the second strings and the trombone. This is still pretty big. And it's got that synth bass in there, but it's not over the top. So I'm going to save this as my middle position. And then now we're going to go to our default. And I'm going to bring pretty much everything out, except for these first three sounds. I want the piano right out in front and a little bit of this string pad, and then these actual sampled strings we're going to make really subtle, because I know those are pretty bright. Let's see how this sounds. So... Yeah, I think that feels nice. Uh, and I can very easily draw a connection between that starting point and just swelling up into a little bit more as those strings get more prominent. So I'm just gonna play the one chord and let you hear this transition. The strings just fade in really smooth and that power from the bass comes in. So this is probably where I'd go for that first chorus of Manger Throne. And then by the end, when we're doing all that crazy stuff with the choral parts, then we could be all in. And I hear those church bells just subtle in the mix, but really bringing it together and all those changes. Christmas time is here, folks. Phil, it's a great song. Excited to get to check it out for the first time today and looking forward to listening to it in the weeks to come. If you folks are Sunday Keys app users, I'll put a shared setlist link in the description. You can open that link on your Sunday Keys device and it will bring in this patch so you can try it out for yourself. Or if you know that you're gonna be playing Major Throne at your church this Christmas, we'll also have a song specific patch that replicates all of the sounds and programming from the original song much more accurately than I'm sure I did in this short video. So we'll put a link in the description to that song specific patch as well. And that'll be available in Sunday Keys app. Thanks for watching folks. Merry Christmas.